good morning. This is Richard Shu, host of Shu Untied. Uh, this morning, I'm really thrilled and pleased to have with me as my guest, Michael Esquivel, who's a partner at Fenwick, but, and also the host of his own podcast, Closing Time. Michael, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Richard, and excited to spend a few minutes with you today. Well, definitely. I, I rarely get to interview other podcasters, so I feel like I'm interviewing the interviewer today. I love it. I love it. Br bring it on. You, you, you're, unfortunately, <laughs> you're the pro and I'm the amateur, so uh, I'm hoping to learn a few things today. Uh, okay, well, let's see. Well, let me just start by asking the basic question is what made you decide to do it in the first place? I mean, what 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 possessed you to wake up one morning and say, I want to have a be a podcast host? Great question. You know, honestly, I, I wish it could. I wish I could take all the credit. Uh, but like many good things in life, good timing, good fortune, and most importantly, a great relationship. Mm -hmm. My very dear friend Hallie Teco, who was the co-founder and CEO for many years of Rock Health, uh, which is an, a nonprofit uh, based in San Francisco, focused on the digital health tech space. Yep. She uh, she had been working on her own podcast called Heart of Healthcare. And she thought, hey, you know, an interesting spin would be to partner up with a lawyer uh, who also angel invests, which I have the privilege of doing from time to time. And we wanted to provide a platform where founders could share the inspiration, the vision that drove them to start their incredible companies. Hmm. And, and so we sort of brainstormed for a bit and we thought, hey, look, it'd, it'd be a great platform for, for these entrepreneurs and for some venture capitalists to come on and think of it as an opportunity to do a pitch, but to do it in a in a in a sort of non, you know, high stakes, non pressure cooker, sort of think of it as a shark tank, but all positive. It's all about <laughs> asking questions and probing and trying trying in 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 really constructive ways to provide feedback where where we might be able to provide some perspective, but also just an opportunity to to hear those compelling stories and inspirational motivations. Interesting. Well, and so how's it going so far, man? You've done a bunch of episodes. I mean, is are you having fun? What what is your sense about it? Oh, it is it's been a blast. I mean, working with my dear friend Hallie, I mean, she and I have known each other going back to 2008, I think. So it's been a long journey together. We've grown up together, if you will, in our professional careers. And being able to partner with her and just have a, have a great time talking to great founders, bringing them on, uh, inviting amazing venture capitalists, and and just riffing on what's going on in the health tech space. What what's going on? Where where it's what's the future look like? So it's been a blast. We're we're twenty episodes in and, wow. and counting, yeah. Uh, and it's been just uh, an amazing ride. Now the one question I always get asked, I'm just curious. Do you you know how how do you prepare for your interviews? Do you give the questions to the founders? I mean, how do you prepare for these things? Yeah, it's a great question. And we really purposely don't want it scripted. So we don't do a lot of prep. I mean, of course, I'll, I'll take a little poke around it. If there's a pitch deck or, you know, something out there in the in the uh, the Google sphere that I could access. Mm -hmm. But generally, I want to go into it as many venture capitalists and investors would somewhat cold mm -hmm. and just get an opportunity to hear the story and, and therefore hopefully provide some helpful feedback to these terrific uh, founders and entrepreneurs about, you know, hey, that, that may, maybe think about that aspect a little, you know, d double clicking there a little bit. And hey, have you thought about this? And what about some of those challenges? And again, all in the spirit of finding a great uh, dialogue that hopefully is helpful and, and in the process has an opportunity to share with listeners like, hey, what's what's some of the cool stuff going on out there? Hmm. Now, do you have trouble finding guests or is it the opposite problem? We have too many people that want to do it. Uh, su such a humbling uh, question. Uh, the short answer is there's there's been just a terrific flow of entrepreneurs who are interested, who want to collaborate with us on the project. We, we, we sort of source it in three ways. W one, of course, is because of the terrific um, uh, success we've had to date. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs have reached out and asked if they might be considered to join Hallie and me on that podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is through Hallie's terrific network. She'll reach out to founders and uh, entrepreneurs and venture capitalists in her network. And then humbly, you know, my own network. I've, I've got an amazing practice with some of the most transformative founders out there. And from time to time, there's an opportunity when there's a good fit to invite them. And I've been just so, uh, so honored that they've been willing to jump in. And, and so I've had a number of my uh, founding CEOs join us in, the, uh, in, the, in those sets of conversations. 
That's terrific. Now, what is kind of your cadence? Do you do one a week, one a month? What is kind of your pace? Yeah, it's it's always just a scheduling question, you know. So we we try to we try to record a few episodes every week when we can. Uh, of course, there was um, periods when folks were on vacation, or uh, I've been traveling a bit for work. Uh, Hallie's been traveling for her for her various projects, and so. We, we try to we try to line it up as best we can. So there I wish I could say there was a regular cadence. It's more about when can we get everybody's schedules aligned? Because it's not just the two of us. It's the founder. And and we'll bring in, you know, great venture capitalists on, on our show. We've had Bob Kocher and Lin Chao O'Keefe and Cheryl Chang, just an amazing uh, group of, uh, of VCs, uh, many, many others that have joined us. And so uh, so just trying to get four schedules sometimes to align isn't the easiest thing to do. I can imagine. But the nice thing, of course, everybody, they can be anywhere, right? You obviously don't have to be on the same room or anything like that. Yeah. That, what a change, right? I'm, I'm sure you've benefited from that, Richard, just, totally. just not, not having to be in the, in, in a studio and with the incredible technology that we're all privileged to access today. Uh, it's, it's, it's just as good as being real time IRL as my kids like to remind me. Now, how much time, what is kind of the average length of your podcast? Um, you know, what is your target time period? I mean, I'm sure you could talk for hours, but you know, what, <laughs> what kind of is your target time length? Yeah, we, we really we really do try to focus on getting 30 to 40 minutes of good recording, substantive recording time in, right? And as you know, at times we'll run into some technical issues or a founder might be calling in from or, or Zooming in from New York and a siren comes. And so we need to pause and, and redo it. So, but but in the end, the, the goal is to cut a finished product of about 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. And then how about editing? I mean, you, you are you doing the editing? Somebody who does the editing for you? Because I mean, I know that's always a challenge with any podcast. Uh, Ah, you know it, isn't it? It's always uh, it's always such a challenge. Um, no, the, uh, the the fortunately we've got a, a terrific team here at Fenwick. My colleagues on on the marketing side work very very closely with a small production team, and and uh, and they do a lot of the uh, the back end to get get these things you know ready for prime time. So do to you speak. listen? Do you listen to the interview again when you're done and 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 offer kind of weigh it in, or you kind of just turn it over and let somebody else kind of produce the fin finished product? Yeah, you know, I love to go back and 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 hear the product. Uh, oftentimes, of course, before it gets published, but uh, but not always able to. Uh, just the realities of it. Uh, but uh, I do. I've obviously listened uh, to every episode after the fact in one way, shape, or form. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I don't know about you, Richard, but I've always struggled hearing myself. Uh, uh, from an audible perspective, you know, everyone is self-conscious or at least, at least I'm extremely self-conscious. And so uh, it, it's one of those things that I've had to get used to. Now, I'm sure you'll never run out of founders because there's always tons of them in Silicon Valley and you can always extend the geography. But are you thinking that at some point you'll take the podcast to in a different direction or anything like that? You know, it's it's uh, it's a good question. We've done a couple of we, we've experimented with a couple of different episodes. I don't know if if your listeners have had a chance to listen to closing time, but we did one on on uh, the state of the venture market at, at you know a few weeks ago, and we talked about what what I saw in in the back half of twenty two and 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 carrying all throughout twenty three, and then unfortunately leading into Q one here of twenty twenty four in terms of some of the challenges we're seeing in the venture market. So we did an episode around around those trends. And then we did another episode around what I'm seeing in the M&A markets, which, which unfortunately still remain a bit challenged from uh, a volume and activity perspective. Mm -hmm. And and we did one on wind downs, uh, unfortunately, in this, you know, the creative destructive process of Silicon Valley, you're going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to have uh, ups and downs with, with, with companies. What's, what's fascinating is, there, there's such an amazing psychology in Silicon Valley around failure is not failure. It's just an, you figured out another way that wouldn't work to succeed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's just uh, it's just fascinating. So we did a session on, on wind downs and uh, I think we'll do sort of um, different ad hoc experiments with different different things. Look, I've been doing this humble now for 24 years. And just through pattern recognition, osmosis, working hand in hand with these founders over the last couple of decades, you sort of learn, you know, do's and don'ts, trends, what what has worked, what hasn't worked doesn't mean it will or won't work in the future. But it's invaluable perspective that I think, um, you know, I can share in terms of, hey, this is these are things that I've seen in my career. And so we'll do we'll, we'll in the uh, very, very near future.
Got it. Well, one of the things I struggled with, I'm just curious if you get the same thing is how'd you come up with the name for your, the title of the name for your podcast? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> we, we, we spent a bit of time bouncing and throwing around a bunch of different ideas. And this one just caught, you know, it, uh, Hallie's great marketing genius eye and ear for, mm -hmm. you know, what, what really resonates. And given that, again, it was sort of a, a, a positive Shark Tank experience, if you will, uh, the notion of hey, it's closing time. This is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> help our founders close the deal, and uh, and so that was uh, part of the inspiration. But uh, but there are so many, as you know, Richard. It's not just you or me. There's a lot of folks that always support these initiatives and projects. And uh, I, I'm fortunate to have a great marketing set of colleagues here that uh, here at Fenwick and West that have uh, gone way above and beyond to make this look seamless, for, at least from my perspective. And uh, and so uh, they, they deserve most of the credit, but it, it is a fun name and and uh, it's one that caught both Hallie and my uh, ear and attention. That's so cool. Well, Michael, thanks so much for sharing this and congratulations on the success of your podcast. I mean, I'm, I'm always encouraging people to try it because it is so much fun. I really enjoy it. And it's just great to have a fellow podcaster come on and tell me how much they like it. Oh, th thanks for letting me share a few minutes about it. It's uh, it's something unique. Lawyers don't do a lot of this stuff, yeah, right? And and we, we tend to be a we're sometimes a little too busy, but b it's a uh, it's it's a it's a unique platform, and uh, and it, it can be a little a little bit nerve wracking because we tend to be conservative by nature, not not politically, but but in 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 our profession, and so. It, it takes a little bit of, of getting out of your comfort zone and, and uh, saying, look, I want to provide a platform for these amazing founders. I mean, these visions, these stories are just so inspirational. And so being a small part of their journey and, and giving them a little bit of, a, of an amplified platform to do that is, uh, is, is what uh, re really inspired me to do it. Yeah, it's a totally cool story. This is Richard Shu and Michael Esquill. Thanks. Thanks.